Hello, and welcome to another edition of our Coffee Mug, in which we share marketing tips for Marketo users. Today's webinar is on the topic of scaling marketing operations, The Struggle is Real. Our speakers today are Cindy Marty, Digital Marketing Manager CRM at SubZero, and Alex Peltier, CEO of Percuto. And my name is Sarah Frazier, and I'll be moderating our discussion. We have a great session lined up for you, but before we get into our presentation, just a few housekeeping reminders. Of course, all attendees are in listen-only mode. We will have a Q&A time at the end of this presentation. You may submit questions at any time while we're speaking. You may use your chat box to do so. Additionally, this webinar is being recorded for on-demand viewing. After the webinar is over, we'll send you a link to the slide deck and recording in case you wish to share this presentation with your team. We'll also send you a link to our free scalability ebook, which includes a scalability self-assessment to give you an idea of the vulnerabilities within your own current operations. Finally, since this is a coffee mug, we will be drawing the names of three attendees at the end of our presentation, the lucky winners of our Starbucks gift cards. Oops. If you are not familiar with Percuto, we help marketing leaders who feel frustrated with not having a bigger impact on revenue. We help simplify MarTech and create impactful strategies and execute on day-to-day -day campaigns. Percuto is also a Visible and um, Marketo Platinum partner, an Adobe community partner, as well as a Microsoft partner. Okay, now let's get into our topic for today. We're looking forward to a great discussion. And so without further ado, I'd like to turn the presentation over to you, Alex. Thanks, Sarah. All right. Just a moment, I will actually turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Perfect. So, well, thank you, Sarah, again for the introduction, and hello, everyone, um, and welcome for today's session. So, it's it, what we're going to be discussing today is all about SubZero's journey towards decentralized marketing operation. And before we get into the detail of the presentation, I just want to point out that in this presentation, we have a lot of graphic images of food. So I know it's about lunchtime, so I really want to apologize in advance for uh, those of you who just finished eating or about to start and you wish that you had one of these meal. But in any case, they have all been cooked on the uh, ex exceptional appliances from Sun Zero. All right, so um, during the uh, presentation today, we'll we're going to explain to you more in depth how SubZero transform their marketing operations from a traditional centralized model to an hybrid model. We'll be covering their challenges, their needs, and the solution uh, that was actually put in place, and uh, the roadmap for future enhancements, the, some of the results they got, and finally, the key takeaways that you guys can put in practice uh, inside of your organization right away. Uh, so today, uh, I'll be joined by uh, Cindy Marty, who is the uh, man uh, sorry the marketing manager in CRM at Subzero Wolf, and Cindy is a dynamic marketer. She has always been uh, leading the digital transformation for the past couple of years at Subzero, and she's always looking forward, uh, you know, with strong vision and thinking about what is possible when it comes down to uh, marketing operations. She has a background in marketing and in IT, so I think she's a true unicorn out there. <laughs> so without any uh, further ado. Uh, Cindy, I'd like to pass it over to you at this moment. Thank you, Alex. So before we get into the meat of our presentation, I uh, want to give you a little bit of background about who SubZero is. So we are the premier, um, or we're the leader in luxury kitchen appliances. Uh, we've been uh, in our space for over 75 years, um, and over the last 20 years, we've included two more brands. So Sub-Zero was the uh, refrigeration and, um, and cold um, line of our products, uh, Wolf being our cooking, and then our newest brand being Cove, our dishwasher. So we have a full package of luxury um, kitchen appliances. So Sub-Zero is uh, different in that we actually have three distinct audiences uh, that we market to. 
Uh, so we have our B2C, which are you know our traditional prospects and residential owners of our products. We also have our B2B. So that group is our dealers, um, installers, distributors, people that we work with in that fashion. And then we also have an audience that we call our influencers. And these are people who influence the purchase uh, decision. So for us, this would be kitchen designers or architects, uh, people who are working with our customers and really leading them towards specifying our projects, um, or excuse me, our products. Uh, so additionally, I, I'm very lucky to have a team, a total team of four, which I think is uh, different from other organizations we talk to. So when I talk about, uh, you know, the things we have today, it's really a team effort, um, and I'm lucky in that. But really, at the end of the day, uh, I'm excited to talk about um, how we've started to transition and, and some of the steps we, we've taken to get there. So Alex, if you want to go to the next slide. Uh, so getting into the details of our challenge uh, that we were facing, so, um, and these are kind of some of the high level items, but uh, we know that our regional marketing managers um, in our distributors have a really great relationship with their market and understand um, what they need to do to, you know, further Sub-Zero's uh, goals. And so we were really being asked uh, to support them in their, especially marketing automation efforts. And unfortunately, as that practice grew, we were really getting um, kind of tight on, you know, resources and budget and really being able to execute uh, for that group and therefore, you know, impacting their ability to do what they do best. Um, and then ultimately, it gave us some com conflicting priorities between what we needed to do corporately, um, as well as what the regional marketing managers um, needed to do. And so we really started looking at how we could find a solution to the, this challenge um, in particular, um, and knowing that we weren't going to be able to, um, you know, do it in the same model that we were doing um, at the time. So going to means. Uh, so Alex, yeah, thank you. Um, and so it kind of I was saying we needed to find a new way to, to facilitate the needs of our regional marketing managers and the distributors, um, you know, really looking for a scalable solution. So even though I'm very lucky to have that um, a team of four, uh, we knew that we, we were going to be up against blockers and getting additional resources or budget. So how could we find um, really a solution that worked? Uh, you know, for for everyone and, and that could continue to grow with us. Um, additionally, uh, you know, we wanted to empower the regional marketing managers. So really getting away from, you know, potentially a very, very centralized um, model where we had to be involved with everything and really allowing them, you know, to, to work through and, and meet their business needs uh, for each um, for each of their own distributorships. Um, so with that, um, you know, we brought the questions um, that we had to, you know, Percuto, who um, is our marketing automation vendor, and we work with them both on strategic and execution, um, and, and said, here, here are the specific needs. We need a way um, to kind of continue to scale. Um, and with that, Alex and his team brought um, us uh, a solution, um, and I'm going to pass it back to Alex to go through that solution that they presented to us. Perfect. Thank you, Cindy. Um, so what, one of the first thing we did in order to design the right solution for uh, for Sub-Zero was to look at their current processes, right? So how, how Cindy and her team were centralizing everything through their marketing operation. So essentially, all their original marketing manager had to submit their campaign requests to the centralized uh, marketing operation team. And, and as Cindy explained, uh, you know, uh, among other things, it was creating a lot of bottleneck uh, and it was also uh, putting some delays in the process when, when it was coming down to execute those campaigns. And essentially, the original marketing manager were not getting the support they needed to achieve their own goal. So once the process mapping was completed, we draft a couple of options to explore further. So among them, one, one option was to simply keep the same process and hire more people in the marketing operation team, right? Or even to outsource to an agency. But at the end of the day, uh, it would have been more costly 
and it would have been also only a short-term solution as where uh, Sub-Zero uh, wanted something in the long term. Uh, and the other very important component was the fact that that solution was not even, uh, you know, achieving the need of empowerment of the regional marketing manager. So, so with all of that reason, we decided to drop this uh, this option. So, the other idea was to decentralize all the campaign execution to the regional marketing manager. All right, and before I explain all in detail the option of decentralization. So uh, I'd like just to uh, give a little bit more context to the audience. So here, what I have on my screen is a, is a, an image, a diagram from Scott Brinker. Uh, if you guys have a chance to read his blog, uh, Chief Martech, uh, I think it is an exceptional source of information about how, how the technology and then the, the marketing operation actually play together. Uh, but essentially, uh, what, what Scott is demonstrating in his diagram here, it's that centralized and decentralized are only two of the four forces that are at play uh, in the marketing and technology operation model. So automate and humanize are the other two. So we essentially centralize automation primarily for efficiency and we decentralize to empower the people across the organization and increase the speed of execution. But we automate to uh, orchestrate the flow between decentralized and centralized, and we humanize to define our brand and deliver authenticity in our messaging. And depending on the objectives that you're trying to achieve, unique circumstances and your identity, you'll need to wait in a little bit more in certain directions. So the tension between the four forces is not a fixed point along the scale, but it's a continuous ebb and flow. So moreover, what Scott is arguing today is that uh, as part of the new rules for marketing and technology and operation, you should try to centralize everything you can and you should decentralize everything you can. You should automate and humanize everything you can as well. So it's not anymore, uh, should I do one or the other, but how can I actually do one and the other in order to continue to, uh, to execute and to grow your operation? So with that thinking in mind, we uh, we thought about okay so if if we were to do some decentralization like how can we do it in a way that we could continue also to leverage the other four uh, forces so uh, decentralizing is it's always a great solution uh, but it also has some challenges like everything in life it's not there's no easy path <laughs> so uh, what we thought about here was how can we decentralize and empower the original marketing manager, but without losing the brand control? So how to mitigate the risk uh, associated with privacy compliance uh, in the context of regulation like CASEL, GDPR, or the soon to come uh, enforce the California CCPA? Or even more like how do you train and support regional marketing managers to be autonomous on their campaign? So the existing tools that were in place, uh, you know, at Sub-Zero, they are using Marketo as their marketing automation platform, but that's the same thing with any other tool uh, out there in the market. They, they were still requiring a lot of technical knowledge to operate at scale, right? And, and typically, uh, most of the original marketing manager, whether it was at Sub-Zero or, or in most organizations that we're talking to, they are, they are not marketing technologists. They are very good marketers that they know the market, they know the audience, they know the messaging, they're able to execute very good campaign, but when it comes down to being uh, uh, on the geek side, it's a little bit less their, um, their strength. So the solution we proposed to Sub-Zero was essentially to empower the original marketing manager through a citizen technology approach, right? So that's another term that, that Scott is using uh, often these days. So we basically developed a simplified user interface that we call Jetto that is sitting on top of Marketo, the marketing automation platform. Uh, the original marketing managers simply need to fill out that web form and it put all the requirements of the campaign. And through the API, uh, we automatically go and create uh, all the, the assets and all the, the campaign inside of Marketo. So not only it, it is that approach is structuring the campaign process and empowering the original marketing manager, but also it eliminates the typical challenges relating to the decentralizing operation model.
So I would say that suddenly a whole new world opened up for Sub-Zero and, and then Cindy's going to share a couple of more examples of the type of results they, uh, they actually achieve with that. Uh, I believe that you know when, when you read about uh, the topic a little bit, I think it's a true example of how the citizen technology is now empowering anyone across the organization to launch campaign. So at the end of the day, the solution we proposed was more of an hybrid model uh, for the marketing operation. So we combine both centralized and decentralized approaches. So we, we leverage the automation at the root to keep uh, and kept the human touch in, in the original marketing manager's hands uh, for the campaign execution. So on a side note, we've been helping organization uh, facing scaling challenges over the past five years now. And the pattern of challenges we describe is not unique to Sub-Zero. It's like we're, we're actually seeing it more and more in the space these days. Uh, so a lot of more people are actually talking about like, should I decentralize or should I centralize? And one of the explanation, I think uh, it, it, it is because now most organization adopted marketing automation a couple of years ago now, and, and it's becoming a more mature technology. And, and for those who have been around for a little while, like me, you can relate to the fact that marketing automation was, has been mostly uh, about automating and decentralizing everything you can. But now I think the pendulum is swinging back and we're seeing a higher demand uh, for decentralization and humanization of the marketing operation. So uh, out of curiosity, I just would like to uh, ask a quick poll to the audience to try to understand where you guys are. Uh, so which uh, operation model are you guys using in your uh, organization? Like, is it centralized, decentralized, or a combination of both? And I believe, Sarah, you can kick the um, poll right there. <clears throat> so I'll give it maybe a minute uh, for you guys to, uh, to complete. <clears throat> All right. All right. So, okay. So there's a definitely a, a good balance here between centralized and, and a combination. I think it's uh, it's good. Uh, there's definitely not a good or wrong answer here. I think it really really depends on where your organization is and and what are the different uh, challenges that you're facing uh, to make sure that you have the right uh, the right approach. Uh, but I think there's definitely room for uh, seeing more and more in the market over the next couple of months and years uh, of a combination of both approach uh, in order to uh, allow all the flexibility that we just described. So, but that's a good thing. So thank you uh, for that. And if, hold on, I think, all right. All right, so I can pass it over back to you, Cindy, for uh, explaining the next steps. Yeah, and just to um, you know, round out what Alex was saying when uh, him and his team presented uh, the opportunity of Jetto, uh, we really saw it as our aha moment. We knew that it met you know, really our needs to be scalable and protect the brand. Um, and really what happened is very quickly we started to realize that not only for our regional marketing managers, um, that was kind of a new ask of our, our team or you know, newer ask, um, is we started to see other potentials um, within the marketing department as well as uh, throughout the organization. And so we're definitely starting with our regional marketing managers, um, but Consumer Insights was a very quick uh, contender um, you know, that has been utilizing um, the new tool of the campaign automation. Uh, so just to give a, a little bit of um, <clears throat> excuse me, insight, uh, as to, to how this benefits the organization is that um, consumer insights or our research, uh, you know, oftentimes they're being asked by, you know, our new product uh, development teams um, to gain insights on kind of new products that they're working on. And in the past, we would get that request in and between, you know, the data and the campaign needs, um, it could take, uh, you know, up to several, um, you know, weeks or a few weeks to uh, accomplish and, and get a survey out for them. And by giving them the, the tool and the process, uh, they're able to execute a campaign within a few days. And so that's really making an impact on where, um, you know, different parts of our organization can get information that they need um, faster. Uh, so 
we do have a few other areas that we're looking at how can we utilize and um, create citizen technologists. Um, so within our sales or customer care departments, um, product marketing and potentially even human resources. Uh, so we're really excited about really creating more citizen technologists throughout the organization. Um, and then ultimately, uh, you know, it'll give us more, more time to work on things. But I think everyone wants to go know the very specific results or some of the things that we're looking at. Uh, so Alex, thank you. Uh, so um, I am happy to say that we actually have just recently officially launched uh, Jetto. Uh, so we here take a little bit um, more time to get something um, kind of out uh, up and running. Uh, but we we're very, very excited about it. So a lot of our results came from our forecasting or, or um, excuse me, not results, but we forecasted our potential results. Um, so uh, the biggest thing that we saw was a potential um, cost reduction. So we estimated or forecasted that by the end of 2019, we would potentially need up to a full-time um, employee to fit the needs of the regional marketing managers. Um, and so looking at that, that resource time and what it will take for someone using Jetto to facilitate the same need will be about 10% of the time. Um, so that time is just really, you know, reviewing and ensuring that the campaigns meet brands, um, brand expectations, and then um, really going ahead with the, the launch of the campaign. Uh, so and again, kind of execution time. So generally our campaign time was from three to five weeks down to three to five days. Uh, so just really making everyone more efficient. Uh, so those that need the tools as well as our team, which really is going to allow us to complete more campaigns, uh, work more, you know, more on corporate initiatives, uh, and then ultimately making our, our tool set or, you know, Marketo uh, more efficient because we can really focus in on that uh, tool versus uh, the email campaigns. So we wanted to present um, or, or share, I should say, some lessons that we learned from this project and projects similar to it within our organization. Um, so really prepping and creating successful transition for everyone um, involved uh, will really make this project uh, smooth uh, you know, really for, for your team. Um, so for us, our, knowing our audience was a big factor in this. So we had a lot of, and we'll talk about stakeholders um, here in a moment, um, or the C-suite buy-in, but uh, knowing that our audience was regional marketing managers out in the field who are not just working on email, but they're working on print and the events. Um, knowing that we had to really present the information to them in a way that they definitely saw um, and understood the benefit. Um, so I always like to say that we change our message, but not the facts. So how we present it uh, to each individual audience um, was different. Uh, so for example, someone internally would want to know the benefits not only for us and the regional marketing managers. Uh, so very different there. Uh, with our transition, having a, uh, a good change management plan, um, that way they know ahead of time what's expected of them, um, and we can start, you know, working through that even as we're starting to present um, the ideas. Uh, we do all of our support uh, for our tools, and so really the, the technical perspective as well as the brand, so we had brands involved in the process. Um, and created that ongoing support for, for the regional marketing managers. Uh, that way we're not just giving them a, a you know, suite of tools and asking them to go, but uh, we can continue to have strategy questions. We can offer them support from brand um, or Percuto in this case for us um, or our internal team here. So I'm gonna jump to lessons uh, number two. So really getting that C-suite buy-in. Uh, our C-suite, especially in this area, is really involved. Um, and so the first thing that we wanted to, um, you know, get from our stakeholders was the agreement on the actual problem. Uh, so understanding that, you know, 
having people or more people within our Marketo instance was actually putting us at a risk. And so really, you know, we didn't pull up Marketo and showed them a bunch of information. Um, what we did is we actually took a screenshot of just every activity that was occurring within about a 30 second time period. Um, and they could see all of the activities that were happening between emails, compliance updates, preference center updates, things of that nature. And we could identify and, and um, demonstrate that they um, that we really shouldn't allow all of our regional marketing uh, managers into Marketo. Um, and so it really got agreement first that we had um, this you know, business issue or problem. And then we could really start talking about um, how, do we, how do we solve it. Um, keeping the C-suite uh, presentation really high level again, um, so really boiling it down to the facts <clears throat> Um, and focusing in on, again, that solution. How are we going to fix it? Um, and specifically on um, what type of resource it would take, uh, you know, to get this up and running, what would be the benefits, as I said, you know, suggested or um, shared earlier, that 90% savings of a full-time resource. Um, and then lastly is really the rollout plan. Um, so uh, making sure that your Oftentimes, you know, with a new tool, um, that provider of the tool or your partner can move a lot faster um, than, than you can, and that's what we feel here. Um, so being really realistic with our timing. Um, so, you know, over, pro or, um, yeah, over promised, um, not over promised, excuse me, um, making sure that it's realistic so that way, um, you know, you can actually hit it and provide those results when expected. Lastly, our last lesson um, is avoiding some pitfalls. Uh, so I kind of talked about this, but delays due to internal constraints. So the idea that with a proper rollout plan, um, you can inform those that need to be involved and set expectations of what uh, they um, you know, will need to do with throughout the process. Make sure that they're on board with the plan. Um, and the timing, I think oftentimes, you know, organizations, including ours, uh, when we haven't approached it correctly, will give out a plan and say, you know, we need you to do this within a few days. And without their buy-in to that plan, we end up, um, you know, getting delays. So if we can create a full project plan um, that will allow us to really get everything um, accomplished in, in a realistic time frame. Um, like I said, you know, setting expectations and getting um, that stakeholder preparation will really make your project, um, you know, run smoothly. We're really uh, into feedback um, of our users here. And so we actually have official feedback channels um, for all of our tools to allow our users to send in ideas or thoughts uh, um, or questions. Um, and so no different than any of our other tools or processes, we have offered a feedback channel, um, you know, for JEDO. It allows us to continue to evaluate how is it working for them or how can we make adjustments. Um, you know, it also will help us build on future projects. Uh, so that way, um, as we roll out the next set of solutions to them, we can make sure that we're already accounting for the feedback that they gave. Um, so getting a little bit more into our feedback channel, um, so uh, we have, um, like I mentioned, an official feedback channel. So uh, the way that we operate ours is anyone who accepts feedback can enter it into the, into the flow. And then our feedback is reviewed by the management um, uh, team. So that way we can identify, is this actually a system change? Is it... Uh, a change to maybe one of the campaigns, um, or is it an opportunity for more education? Um, so going back to that change management and really making sure that people are, are trained um, and have the tools and the knowledge so that way they can actually execute um, and really impact, again, their regional uh, you know, marketing efforts. With that, those were our three lessons. Alex, was there anything uh, you wanted to add? 
Yeah, well, thank you, Cindy. I mean, at this point, uh, well, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing uh, for sharing your thoughts and, and, and lesson learned. I think it's important to uh, allow ourselves and, and everybody uh, in, in the audience to, to understand that this is uh, sometimes a journey that you need to do stuff internally to make it happen. And I think you really, really share good tips here to, uh, to help the audience uh, be successful in, in, in deploying uh, you know, similar type of, uh, of initiative inside of the organization. So yes, I want, to, I want to jump in too, Cindy um, and Alex. Thank you both for your transparency, uh, as well as sh sharing lessons learned. I mean, it's so helpful for all of us. Um, we're all struggling with how do we scale effectively. Um, so really appreciate that. I will admit your slides did make me hungry. You warned me about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, great job there. Um, we do have some questions coming in from the audience that I want to uh, send your way. Before we do that, uh, I promised uh, winners of our Starbucks gift cards, so I want to go ahead and give those out. Uh, congratulations to Paul Sue, uh, Laura Tegt, T E G T, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, and David Thornton. You are the winners today of our Starbucks gift cards. I will email you um, a, a link to redeem your $5 gift card. So uh, thank you very much and congratulations. Um, now on to some questions from our audience. Um, first of all, some of you are asking, will we be sending out links to view the slide deck? The answer is yes. Uh, you will get an email after this uh, presentation is over that will have a link to view the deck that you saw today, the presentation, as well as um, a link to our scalability ebook. And the scalability ebook is is a uh, it goes a little bit more in depth into Sub Zero's story, as well as some other information, including a scalability assessment, so you can kind of judge where you're at. Um, which takes us into our first audience question, um, and it is for Cindy, which, Cindy, you talked about Jetto being an aha moment for you, but the question is, was there an aha moment that you knew that something needed to change and you needed a solution? Um, I think there were really two things that pointed us towards that we needed to find um, a different way. Uh, one, honestly, was going back to the feedback channel. Um, we were getting feedback that the timing and, and just pretend, you know, some of the execution uh, delays just to conflicting priorities. We got feedback from some of our regional marketing managers that um, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't working for them. Uh, and so, you know, them really being our customers, or that's how we perceive and, and treat them. So we knew we had to find a different solution. So we talked internally about how we could improve it. And really knowing that we couldn't improve it any more than we already had. We had to really find something outside of, you know, our current flow and our current process, and whether that was a tool or a new idea, such as uh, Jetto and the campaign automation, uh, you know, tool. Um, that was kind of both of those combined were our uh, driving forces or our uh, aha moments. Great. Okay, good. And then how did you um, communicate the change management to your um, marketing operations team? You know, what did that look like? How did that work? So we're a very collaborative team. So definitely my direct uh, team was involved in the conversations um, and helping to shape what this would look like. Um, at the end of the day, they're the ones who are who had been working on the execution and been working with these teams. So they would really understand, you know, in the nitty gritties what would and wouldn't work. Um, but then to the rest of the team, it really was, uh, you know, really presenting it, talking again, not very much different than how we did for the C-suite, uh, really just getting into more details um, and going through how we came to the conclusion, um, you know, of, um, you know, the very specifics, what was our problem? Um, so we did that, you know, both with uh, marketing management and then we did that um, with other sales uh, members as they were very heavily involved. Um, but really just got that buy-in first um, and again, that rollout plan and agreement on that. And, and Sarah, if I can add to that, so what we're seeing as well is 
definitely what works very well when it comes down to change management is start by what is the benefit for the end user. So mm -hmm. essentially, if they need to have more flexibility, more empowerment, and then the campaign needs to be done faster, I think this is where you need to stress out that yes, it's another tool or yes, it's another thing they need to change in their current process, but the benefit they're going to get out of it is what they will, um, you know, uh, what, what will make them move. So if you're able to demonstrate clearly that it will actually, uh, you know, improve their, their, their work uh, day, uh, I think you're going to make a, a lot of good, um, a good progress and good success when it comes down to change management. That's great. That's great. And Alex, um, there's a couple of questions here for you. Um, a few about how does Jetto actually work? Um, is it Jetto's API creating the actual assets within Marketo, or is it creating tasks for people to create those assets? Um, right. So a good question. So essentially what Jetto does is it's cloning existing program templates that you have built uh, in Marketo. So we're going to create the program, all the underlying assets, and feed all the information provided by the original marketing manager inside the program tokens. So technically speaking, we're creating everything automatically. And what the uh, centralized marketing operation teams only need to do is just review essentially uh, the tokens before hitting the send button or the schedule button, whatever the timeline is. And then what's the time frame for uh, getting Jetto up and running? How long does it take? I think this could be done fairly quickly. Uh, typically, uh, the solution itself is probably like 30 days to get up and running. Mm -hmm. uh, but as uh, as Cindy can testify as well, I think there's inside of your organization when you're going to present it and onboard everyone in terms of like, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to uh, leverage the tool to improve the daily process. But but I believe, uh, uh, Cindy, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're probably going to be complete. We completed that probably within like 70, 75 days uh, top uh, from uh, from uh, starting to uh, to actually having campaign launched. Great, great. Yeah, absolutely. But that has been, um, you know, ours and definitely what Alex, what you said of, um, you know, it's really on us. We we're taking a slower rollout approach, kind of doing one and then going to the next uh, group. So, uh, but, you know, really from, um, you know, the, the team side, uh, they could have, you know, moved quicker um, than we could, so. Great, okay, thank you. Um, Cindy, you mentioned in the first part of your presentation that your organization has uh, field marketers and you have various components that really um, pointed you towards a decentralized model. Um, and so the question also too for Alex, since you work with companies of all different stages and sizes, is there a particular stage or company size or, or indicator that it's time to decentralize? I can start. Uh, I mean, uh, at this point, I think the indicator is really how maxed out is is or are your resources, right? So if, if you can keep up with the volume, it doesn't matter if you have a, you know, a two people team uh, in the centralized office or you have like 12 and 15 people managing those campaign in your centralized uh, operation team. I think at the end of the day, it's really what really, really pushes for the realization is like, can we keep up with the volume? Can we scale up to what our executive are expecting from the marketing to deliver? That's number one. And then two is, is, is the team like in the field that actually has the needs or are they are they empower enough and they're, they're gonna ask for it like they did for for uh, sub-zero they said like hey we want to do this we think we can do it faster we think we can be uh, more closer with the messaging and everything so we want to make sure that we have full control over that so that's going to come really from from the overwhelming feeling of your mops team as well as from the the, the requirements or the demand from the uh, typically your field organization uh, uh, for empowerment Cindy, anything to add? No, I think um, what Alex uh, shared is is really accurate. Is it's really your business needs at the time and and the the pull, I guess, on your current resources and and can you facilitate it or not, or is it time for a new solution? That's great. That's great. 
Okay, I think we're gonna go ahead and close out a little bit early today, give everybody 15 minutes back to their day. Cindy and Alex, is there any other closing comments that you would like to share with our audience? No, I guess I just wanna thank, uh, thank Perkito for the opportunity uh, to speak today. Yeah, well, thanks, Cindy, for being uh, an amazing client, <laughs> and then uh, always looking for new uh, for new project and new stuff, uh, and and moving uh, moving the needle essentially. Thank you very much. Great. Well, thank you both, Cindy and Alex, and thank you for everyone who jumped on today for our discussion. As you exit, you will notice there's a closing poll where we ask you a few simple questions. We appreciate your feedback so that we can continue to present um, webinars that are relevant and helpful to you. So we appreciate your feedback there. Uh, please stay tuned next month as we talk about attribution and we'll be sending invites out for those uh, shortly. So again, thank you very much for joining us today. This concludes our webinar and we hope you have a great day.